What if a simple blood test could finally tell you whether your crushing exhaustion has a biological cause and do it with remarkable accuracy? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today, we're unpacking new research that used 3D genomic mapping to identify myalgic encephalomyelitis, also called chronic fatigue syndrome, with striking precision and what that means for you if fatigue has taken over your life. I'm Alara Sky. We're going to translate the findings into clear takeaways. How this test works, why immune and metabolic dysfunction are central, and which practical steps, drawn from the research, can help you restore balance without guessing. An estimated 17 to 24 million people worldwide live with ME slash CFS. Yet for decades, there hasn't been an objective test. Many of you have normal labs, but can't get through a day without crashing. The study we're discussing measured three dyed DNA folding patterns in immune cells and reached up to 96% overall accuracy, with 92% sensitivity and 98% specificity. That level of performance can shorten years of uncertainty. The method, called EpiSwitch 3D Genomics, examines how your DNA folds inside immune cells. Those folds act like switches that turn genes on or off. Researchers scanned over a million folding points and focused on a defined set linked to immune and inflammation pathways. In ME slash CFS, these switches form a distinct fingerprint that separates affected individuals from healthy controls. What stood out were immune signals. Pathways involving interleukin-2 and tumor necrosis factor were prominent. Evidence that your immune system is chronically activated, not merely stressed by daily life. That pattern supports what many of you have felt. This is a real, multi-system condition with measurable biology, not a collection of vague complaints. There are cautions. The study compared severe patients to healthy controls and didn't include look-alike conditions such as fibromyalgia or autoimmune disease. Larger, more diverse cohorts are needed before this becomes a clinical test your doctor can order. Still, it aligns with other research streams pointing to immune dysfunction and exhaustion. Independent teams have reached similar conclusions using different tools. Cornell researchers used machine learning on cell-free RNA and picked up widespread immune-related changes, achieving about 77% accuracy. Another group at Columbia combined stool and blood markers and correctly identified me cfs in nearly 83% of cases, highlighting leaky gut and an overactive immune response that can spill inflammation into the bloodstream and drain energy. If you or someone you love is struggling, you know symptoms reach far beyond tiredness. Post-exertional malaise, unrefreshing sleep, brain fog, headaches, sore throat, tender lymph nodes, palpitations, light and noise sensitivity. The list is long. Women in their 40s and 50s are affected more often, roughly four times as frequently. Many cases follow infection, and a meaningful percentage of people never fully recover after a viral or bacterial illness. A separate thread gaining evidence is the role of serotonin. You've heard serotonin called a happiness chemical, but excessive serotonin activity can slow cellular energy production and ramp up inflammation. That can feel like central fatigue, your brain broadcasting you're exhausted, even when your muscles aren't biochemically failing. Recent work explored this through the lens of SSRIS. In an animal model, Four weeks of fluoxetine raised serotonin in brain regions that govern sleep and energy. The mice developed me cfs like features. Unrefreshing sleep, post-exertional malaise, orthostatic intolerance that resolved when the drug was withdrawn and improved when serotonin production was blocked. This supports the idea that too much serotonin activity can trigger fatigue states. For you, the implication isn't to stop medications on your own. It's to recognize that pushing serotonin higher isn't always helpful for energy, and alternatives that calm the nervous system without driving serotonin may align better with recovery. That leads to actionable strategies discussed alongside the research. First, support calm and focus with GABA rather than SSRIS when appropriate. 
GABA functions as a break on overactive neural circuits. A practical starting dose is 100 mg daily for mild anxiety or sleep issues. Higher intakes, 500 mg up to 2,000 mg per day, have been used to ease anxiety and insomnia, including in people already taking SSRIS. Pairing GABA with L-theanine can amplify calming effects. Avoid high magnesium GABA blends if they trigger laxative reactions. Second, cut linoleic acid to restore energy. Excess LA acts as a mitochondrial toxin. Eliminate seed oils such as soybean, canola, sunflower, safflower, grape seed, corn, rice bran, cotton seed, and peanut oils. Limit olive or avocado oil to about one tablespoon per day. Aim for under five grams of LA daily and if possible, below two grams, to reduce oxidative stress that can sustain fatigue. Third, eat mindfully to repair the gut-brain immune axis. Prioritize fiber-rich foods and include fermented vegetables. Reduce refined sugar. These steps help seal the gut barrier, lower the flow of inflammatory particles into your bloodstream, and calm immune overactivation that drains energy. Fourth, boost cellular energy production directly. Ubiquinol, the active form of coenzyme Q10, strengthens mitochondrial antioxidant defenses. D-ribose supports ATP generation, helping your cells reestablish a stable energy supply. For many of you, this combination supports the capacity to do more without tipping into post-exertional crashes. Stepping back, true recovery is about restoring balance, calming your nervous system, repairing your gut, removing inflammatory seed oils, and rebuilding energy so your body can heal. New diagnostics that read 3D genomic patterns don't treat disease by themselves, but they validate that what you feel is real and point research toward targeted therapies. It's also important to set expectations. A single marker won't capture every dimension of ME slash CFS, but you now have converging evidence, immune fingerprints, microbiome shifts and neurotransmitter dynamics that anchor your experience in measurable biology. That clarity helps you advocate for care and make changes that relieve strain on your system. If you recognize yourself in this conversation, bring these points to your next appointment. Ask about symptoms that flare after exertion. Discuss any SSRI use and how you feel on it. And get support to implement dietary changes that lower linoleic acid while improving gut integrity. When your energy system is protected, small improvements add up. Here's today's challenge. Over the next seven days, remove seed oils from your meals, cap olive or avocado oil at one tablespoon daily, add a serving of fermented vegetables, and, if appropriate for you, begin with 100 milligrams of GABA in the evening. Track your sleep quality, mental clarity, and tolerance for light activity. Use what you notice to guide your next step. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.